My name is Meg Backus, and I'm a public librarian. My name is Thomas Koki, and I am a visual artist. And last year, we co-taught a grad seminar at Syracuse University called Innovation in Public Libraries, where we tried to envision what the public library could be like in the 21st century. As we see it, the public library is a democracy machine, a genuine commons where people share their resources, share their knowledge, and spread literacy in all its forms. It's a place where people go to inform themselves and then form the society that they live in. They start to hack the social codes that govern their lives. So the question that we tried to answer in our course is what will this democracy machine look like in the future? The way we approached our class was a bit unusual for a library science class. We treated it like a studio art class where we weren't so interested in talking about ideas so much as we wanted to actually make stuff and try stuff out. We looked at various movements since the 60s, like social sculpture, institutional critique, relational aesthetics, interventionist art, as well as DIY hacker and activist practices. We then used these movements to re-examine the public library as an institution and develop new projects to test out. The kinds of projects we're interested in are things like starting car and bike shares out of public libraries, or running alternative free schools out of libraries, or having school media specialists help students research and write their own textbooks, or having libraries offer zero-interest loans. One of our students, Lizzie Gall, registered the library as a pickup location for community-supported agriculture. This is the kind of project that could be expanded and replicated elsewhere, and it meshes well with the library farm the collective farm on public land at the Northern Onondaga Public Library, where I work. Another student, Rachel Altman, restored a piano at a public library to make it available for people who can't afford to buy a piano on their own so that they can learn to play and have a space to practice. We'd always wanted to build fab labs and hacker spaces in public libraries. In our view, libraries anticipate the kind of post-scarcity economics that personal fabrication makes possible. One of our students, Lauren Britton Smedley, proposed this idea to a public library and was brought on staff to make it happen. She's now building a fab lab in a public library as her full-time job. This project has recently garnered a lot of national attention, both within the library world and beyond, and we couldn't be happier about this. That's exactly the kind of result that we were hoping for from this class and that we would like to get again for other projects in the coming year. One of the ideas that we spent a lot of time thinking about last year was alternative schools and the need for alternative forms of accreditation. We held several discussions on the topic at the Art School and the Art School and at other alternative schools. I wrote a brief paper on the topic and talked about it at a really exciting conference at the New School, which had a lot of interesting librarians who seemed to be very supportive. We don't want to just talk about this idea. This next year, we're ready to take the leap and try it out. This Spring semester, starting Saturday, January 28th, we're going to port our class out of the university and into the art school and the art school. The class will be called Public Praxis and will be offered tuition free because education should be free. We're going to be participating in the Open Badges Project, which is a collaboration between Mozilla and Peer to Peer University, which provides professional recognition for genuine education that takes place in alternative spaces. A lot of attention is being paid to the need for something like the Open Badges Project or MIT's new MITx system, but what gets us excited is that it allows students and teachers to challenge the monopoly on credit that corporate universities have. Right now, public libraries are under attack by the privatization beast. Privatization beast roams the American landscape, stalking its prey. This same privatization beast long ago gobbled up our university system. The only thing that we need to teach our class is to be in the same room with our students. We don't need a corporate mediator that pays us poverty wages while burying our students under decades worth of crushing debt. Syracuse University, like most universities, is nothing more than an ivy-walled bank, a place where students exchange one form of credit for another and wind up in debt. In fact, after more or less merging with J.P. Morgan Chase, Syracuse University actually invited its CEO, Jamie Dimon, to deliver the commencement address in 2010. He talked about, I kid you not, the importance of holding yourself accountable. The university doesn't add any value to our class, except for accreditation. 
We continue to be exploited because they hold a monopoly on the ability to notarize our students' brains. What alternative accreditation represents to us is the ability to break free from this exploitative system and to become autonomous. What we envision is a national union of adjuncts and students that has the ability to simply walk out of these corporate universities, to become autonomous, and to establish a genuine university system in its place. We want our class to be a proof of concept and to start networking with similar efforts elsewhere. We're hoping to gain support and recognition for this idea or this class from the library world. We've got a lot of great ideas lined up for this year. We're especially interested in exploring how money and debt works, in establishing a local currency for Syracuse similar to Ithaca hours, and in expanding the art school and the art school into the public library system as a whole. And of course, a whole lot of knitting. So if you're an iSchool student, a working librarian, an artist, or just somebody who's interested in these kinds of projects and you're willing to meet with us a few hours each Saturday, send us an email. Our first class will meet at 1 p.m. on Saturday, January 28th at the Art School in the Art School. Which is located at 1003 East Fayette Street, Apartment 8. It's the same building as the Spark Art Space.